Hello, Ricky Wilson here, sitting in for Chris on the Best of the Breakfast Show podcast with Sky from Virgin Radio. Coming up on the show, the hilarious Nish Kumar tells us about heading to the Edinburgh Fringe with his ongoing stand-up tour, Your Power, Your Control. Football legend, Sky Sports pundit Jamie Carragher gets us fired up for the start of the Premier League season. Lioness superstar Alessia Russo has us in awe after the England Ladies Euro 2022 win. And Professor Brian Cox gives us the lowdown on his massive UK tour, Horizons, a 21st century space odyssey. All of that and so much more to come, so let's hear our very first guest. Our next guest has been touring since February and frankly doesn't know where he is anymore. Thankfully, he's staying put in Edinburgh for a week, treating fringe goers to hit shows. The power, your power, your control. You said I'd mess it up. We've got the bangers, he's got the mash. Bosh, bash, bish, it's our friend Nish Kumar. Hi, Nish. Hi, guys. So, Nish, uh, you've just flown in from Montreal. How was that? Really fun. Working, really, really working? fun. Working, doing the Just for Laughs Festival. Mm-hmm. I had, a, uh, I had an, an absolutely great time. Yeah. Um, tell all your jokes. Have you run out now? Yeah, I've told all my jokes. <laughs> I've, told, I've converted them into ca- uh, Canadian jokes. I've, uh, <laughs> that I, must I, be I've... tricky because, you know, you do a lot of stuff that is very... Very UK politics, you know. Yeah, I've got bad news for everybody in the UK. Uh, they've heard about what's going on here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would say it's it's dispiritingly easy to get over jokes about the state of the United Kingdom at the moment. <laughs> but I do like your form of political comedy because it's not just finger pointing. Because you do like bring it back on yourself, and it's quite self self deprecating. No. Oh. Yeah. Oh, listen, th- there's no one I like to satirise more than myself. Well, I absolutely love it. Well, there you go. That's, uh, uh, I've noticed, uh, is this is this your usual Zoom setup that you have now? Yeah, we- this is my usual Zoom setup. Th- that's what you usually do. Because I, I like to see into people's lives. During the pandemic, it was one of my hobbies. And I've, I've noticed there the, the headstock of what looks like a Stratocaster. It is in, indeed in, a oh, Fender Stratocaster. Uh, in, in the classic black. Oh, no, it's oh, Sunburst. Beautiful. It's the Sunburst. Oh, lovely. Are you a frustrated rock star? Uh, yes, very frustrated. I mean, I don't. I think frustrated suggests. Listen, I'm well aware of my own limitations. Is mm-hmm. what I would say about my guitar playing, and I do it in public only when really forced to. But the the, the beauty of it is, I mean, you've the, com- the comedians, the rock stars of today. I mean, we go on tours, and then I'm looking at the poster, and the night before, there's a comedian playing, and I'm thinking he doesn't have to share the money five ways. <laughs> <laughs> and he doesn't have all. He doesn't have to have all this crew and all these lights. So uh, I mean, it must be pretty cool playing these big places and like you know, but you know, just just on your own, just on your own back, just you talking. Yeah, it is. Um, sometimes you do feel a bit like uh, you do sort of feel a bit inadequate as a performer if they've gone out. If you're going out in the same venue, you know, I did the Cambridge Corn Exchange about a week after Little Sims. <laughs> and I saw Little Sims at Glastonbury, and I would say that is not an ideal double header. I would say one person is exhibiting considerably more skill and showmanship. I don't than think the other. so. I don't think so because I mean I'm I'm in a I'm in a band, and the hardest bit for me is the ten seconds of chat between songs. That's what <laughs> that's what freaks me out. The, well, as soon as as soon as the drums start, I'm in my happy place. But and it's the same with these guys. I mean, I'm sharing a, a floor with talk radio, and I just think they just talk for hours. And if I talked for hours, I'd get cancelled. I, I know, mate, but I don't know if you've what well, I don't know if you've tuned into talk radio recently. There's not a huge amount of sense coming out of that studio. <laughs> oh, 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 we've got this on in the corridor. <laughs> Oh, they'll be, oh, they're, they're, they're tough oh, as well. If, if anyone who's presenting talk radio listens to this, please, I beg of you, read one book between all oh, of you. Oh, there we go. All right. Uh, moving, <laughs> moving, moving back to your CD collection that I can see. Uh, you, you, have, you have CDs. Yeah, I still have loads of CDs. I, I sort of haven't been... I, I made the switch to vinyl. Right. Um, <laughs> you, you know about downloads, don't you? Yeah, I do. I, do. I like physical media. I don't know what it is. About I, I do it. as well. And it's really tough to let go of all that old stuff because you've got a load of CDs there. And, you know, when you bought them, it was a real yes. commitment, wasn't it? Also, it's not just when I bought them, it was a real commitment, which it was. But also it kind of I, I can still remember where I was when I got a lot of these when I got a lot of these CDs. Yeah. Like I still have quite specific memories of where I bought them and the kind of uh, the stories behind them. I, this is a copy of Axis Bold as Love by Jimi Hendrix. On the classic CD. It's supposed to be the only way to listen to it is on CD. Yeah, the only way to listen to <laughs> yeah. it is on CD. I bought this in Sydney in the year 2000. See, uh, that you connect memories to things ago. like that. You can't yeah, connect a memory right. to a download. No, you can't. No, I'll never forget where I was the first time I streamed <laughs> Lemonade. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, it takes me right back to being sat on the toilet with my headphones on. Yeah, with, with my phone nestling in the pant yeah. hammock. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was desperately trying to scramble to try and find where my phone was. Yeah. I, I think there's a, there's there's an element. I, I want to invent a little shelf that's, that that goes next to a toilet roll holder, just specifically for phones with a charger on it. I think that, that would. I think you would make quite a bit of money on that. Yeah. I think if the toilet roll shelf phone charger, we've got yeah. to workshop the name. Yeah. But a, a working title, the toilet roll shelf phone charger, would be. I think that would be a huge money. Spend. I always say huge. to I say to my wife that I'm going for my Velvet Underground time, which is. <laughs> Which is which is velvet underground because velvet, you know, like the like the toilet paper. Yeah, yeah. Underground because underneath, and yeah. also because I'm going for a Lou Reed. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> See, that's 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 comedy niche. It, that. that. <laughs> That is a that is a that is the economy with which you delivered several jokes. is <laughs> no. really impressive. Would that get me a show at the Edinburgh Fringe? Almost certainly. Almost I've certainly. seen I've seen a lot I've seen people do a lot more with a lot less. Do you get to go out and see other things at the end of the fridge or can't or can't you be bothered? Because you're the no, to- no, you're I, the top of your game. No, I would I absolutely will go and see a load of stuff. I I, I, I think that um, that's one of the funnest things about being at the festival is being able to see what other people are doing and hang out with your friends. Touring is obviously great and it's been nice in the last couple of years because I've been able to tour. Uh, the last couple of tours I've done, I've done with a support act and a tour manager, so it's less isolating. In 2015 and 16, I did tours in completely on my own. And I'll be frank with you, I went quite mad by the end right, of it. Right. It turns out it's not healthy to only speak to people who have paid to watch you. <laughs> that will do yeah, funny yeah, things yeah. to your brain. That's like me going out to my parents and telling me I'm brilliant at everything I've done. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, only, the only thing I can equate it to in my life is there's a, there's a thing called Austin City Limits where you go and it's just bands playing to bands, right? Yeah. And it's, it's, people, anyone can go, but it's pr- primarily people there are performing there, right? Yeah. And it's quite cool because if you're in a well-known band, then you're kind of cock of the town right yeah. you're walking in and you arrive at some band and they're like oh he's arrived it's quite cool <laughs> do, you, do, do, do you get that now when you're kind of like you know I, is here. I, I could imagine there would be more novelty to it if i wasn't at edinburgh every year <laughs> i think if that if i wasn't there because i'm there every year doing something and i'll be honest with you at this point when i walk in everyone's like no <laughs> why hasn't he left? Why, <laughs> why hasn't he left? Me, me and David O'Doherty walk around Edinburgh like uh, that last series of Scrubs where everyone's like, why are JD and Turk still in this? Well, Nish, have a great time at the Edinburgh Fringe. Uh, Thank you're you there. Very much, whereabouts, whereabouts in Edinburgh are you playing? I'm playing. Uh, I have the it written assembly. down. I thought it'd be better if you said it, though. The, uh, <laughs> I'm playing the Gordon Aikman Theatre uh-huh. as part of the assembly venues uh, in Bristow Square. And before that, you'll be in Weymouth, Torquay, and after that, you're in Amazing Stoke. Amazing Stoke. That's where the the UK tour wraps up in Amazing Stoke. Well, where, where, where else? Where else? That's where, where else? That's where finish? we all finish off. Uh, so <laughs> thank you very much. If you're going to Edinburgh, check him out. If you're not, get on a train, guys. If there are any available, that's that's cutting edge comedy, isn't it? There you go. <laughs> the railways. That's yeah, that's <laughs> and that's satire. And that was. Nish Kumar. Thank you very much, mate. Speak to you soon. Thanks, guys. Thank Have you very time. much. Thanks bye. Then, bye. bye. The best of the Chris Evans Breakfast Show with Sky. Virgin Radio. We've been talking about it all week, but in case you didn't know, the Premier League is back on our screens tomorrow. Sky Sports Premier League is the only place to watch over 100 games. And here to tell us more before the final score, it's Jamie Carragher. Hello, hello. Jamie. Oh, hello. Hello. Oh. hello, hello, hello. Hey. Okay, Jamie, how's it going? We've never met, have we? No, we haven't. We should, uh, should do that sometime. We should do that sometime. Because I was uh, in my daily Googling. I was Googling you. And uh, we were with, uh, roughly the same age. You were born on the 28th of January 1978. And I was born on the 17th of January 1978. So very close. Oh, not too far away. Yeah, yeah. You've just, uh, you've just done me there. I'm starting, I'm, just, yeah. I'm starting to feel it, though. My knees have gone. How are your knees doing? Yeah, not not too good. Now, that's what I'm blaming for this uh, mess up with the phone call. I'm blaming the knees. They're very, oh, it's blaming, the, blaming everything on the knees. So uh, it's coming up to you know kick off Premier League on Sky Sports. And um, do you see that as like going back to work, going back to school, or is it like the start of the summer holidays for you? This no, it's definitely the start of the summer holidays. It's a lot more excitement than uh, joining back to school. Sometimes it can feel like that when you're there with Mr. Yeah, but to uh, but no, uh, the, the excitement, you know, from yourself and I'm sure from players and supporters up and down the country, I don't think it changes too much when the uh, the season's just upon us. Do you uh, do you get jealous of the of the, the the young bucks playing football, or do you do you, do you are you happy to be out of it? 
No, I mean, I might get jealous of the wages they're on now, but I'm sure <laughs> Tommy Smith was saying, I was playing him. But no, listen, I, you know, I'm there. I do look down on the commentating and watching games, and you would love to be able to put those boots on one last time, of course, you do. But we're yeah. involved. Uh, the, the thing is, it's like uh, when, when you were a footballer, what did you think of the pundits? That were, they were doing that job when you were a footballer. Yeah, and does, <laughs> does, does it worry you that like that you they think of you what you thought of them? Exactly, that's what I'm thinking. So I don't try and mix in those circles too much now with players, more with the ex players. Uh, right. I'm not sure we'll go down too well if we uh, we bump into too many of the players at the moment. But that's the hopefully thing. they uh, they listen and take some of it in. Yeah, you can't because you can't hold back. You have to say what you think, and you're there right at the front line of saying what you think. And they, you know these guys are fit and young. Yeah, of course they are. And in the back of my mind, I'm always thinking that they're after our jobs as well when they finish. So, uh, you know, if they, whether they like us or criticise us or whether they respect us, whatever it may be, I mm. think uh, when they finish playing, they'll all want that seat. So I'll try and keep hold for as long as I can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, the training obviously isn't as physical as it used to be, but how, how are you preparing for the season with Sky? Well, we're going down today to speak to the media, uh, you know, big build-up for the season. And tomorrow we have... Uh, Crystal Palace Arsenal first Friday night football of the season so uh, yeah really exciting get together with the lads today we'll go for a meal tonight and, and the preparation media is just you know reading the papers watching Sky Sports News checking your phone social media so you know exactly what's going on with all the clubs keep abreast of it all and I'll have a little look at the, uh, the staff pack tonight we get sent one of them before every game so find out how the teams are doing in pre-season and uh, I'll see how it goes Friday It's a dream job really you've had two dream jobs during your life Professional footballer. I know. And now you got to watch football for a living with a load of old pals. Well, some yeah. are some old enemies, but, so, like, but it must be a real laugh. I mean, it is a dream job, isn't it? I is. I am. Uh, I'm very lucky uh, to play for the uh, the club I love so long. And then uh, I know one man club. And I'm club man. with the man that I didn't love, Gary Neville. Uh, <laughs> that'll be starting tomorrow. But but no, listen. I am very lucky that I'm still in the game. It's not easy for a lot of ex players now to go into coaching, management, or you know get a gig on the TV. So, yeah, I am well aware of where fortunate we are. And uh, hopefully that enthusiasm comes across because I think we could all say, you know, the, you know, the lads and girls who work for Sky Sports, we really love it. Yeah, and I can't wait to watch it. And it all kicks off tomorrow. Who's playing tomorrow? So that's Crystal Palace uh, playing Arsenal at, uh, at Crystal Palace. So it'll be a tough game for Arsenal. That they want to get off to a better start of the season than they did last season when they opened the season on the Friday night at uh, Brentford. But I think they'll be a much stronger proposition uh, this season and uh, all the talk is of uh, of Arsenal's behind the scenes documentary at the moment so uh, hopefully the, uh, they'll be able to do their talking on the pitch tomorrow Well enjoy your first day of the uh, summer holidays tomorrow for you <laughs> and uh, have a really good season enjoy it uh, it's not lovely to talk to you eloquent as ever and thank you very much indeed uh, you can uh, catch on Sky Sports home on the Premier home of the Premier League with 128 games exclusively live this season more than any other broadcaster it's only live once that's a tagline isn't it Jeremy it's only live once oh yeah you'll hear that a lot this season yeah I've, I've seen you in the adverts Was it, do, you, yeah. do you enjoy doing those adverts I enjoy doing them I don't think I enjoy watching them as much but I enjoy doing it <laughs> thanks Jeremy see you soon see you on the TV the best of the Chris Evans Breakfast Show with Sky. Virgin Radio. Our next guest will be throwing particle parties all over the country as his brand new tour, Horizons, a 21st century space odyssey, hits the road. He'll be answering life's biggest questions, including how life began and why does the universe exist. We've got stars in their eyes this morning. It's the brilliant Brian Cox. How was that for an intro, Brian? Can I use that on my tour? I'll be there mind? every night if you want me to do it live. <laughs> yeah, I, for the right well, price. That, that's a deal. <laughs> I mean, if I, if I just have to do 15 seconds and I'm free for the rest of the time, I'll be in your dressing room raiding the rider. <laughs> Look, we'll do, we'll do travel, expenses, everything you want. Perfect. Well, well, I just think that intro. Where were just, you last night? Uh, oh, the Royal Opera House. Oh, the first go. of uh, seven shows at the Royal Opera House. It's just a, a dream. It's you know, mind-blowing. I, I, yeah, I never thought that you know someone would stand there, as I say to them, it's a, a lecture on cosmology. In the Royal Opera House. And, and I know and, and I'm, I know you don't like to talk about that, but, but you were in a band and the rest of them must be livid. They spent, I know. They spent all that time writing songs and getting the, you know, everyone's learning their instruments. You, you're on keyboards. And then, you know, oh, he's left. Why is he left? Oh, he wants to be a professor. And it's now you're playing packed out stadia to, 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 to people. You say it. You say everyone was using, you know, learning their instruments, but I was learning <laughs> physics. Okay. I did. 
you know, yeah. I, I, I'll defend myself on that one. Yeah. Well, who would, who would have thought? Who would have thought? It's amazing, isn't it? Because these, yeah, these sorts, you get, you've broken records with people coming to them, haven't you? It, it's, it's strange, you know, when um, the, the really big shows, so, so the Royal Opera House is a beautiful venue. Mm. But then at the, at the end of August and through September, we're in arenas. And as you know, it's a different kind of feel. And there's a really strange thing happens. So with the O2, for example, there'll be 14,000 people there. And sometimes I say something. Like I say, well, a black hole, I talk about black holes a lot. And, I, and I, we've got <laughs> images of black holes. We've got an image of one in a galaxy 55 million light years away. It's called M87. Yeah. And it's six billion times the mass of our sun. So just think about that. Six billion suns. I can't think about it, Brian. Washed, I can't. Squashed away yeah. out of existence. And when you look at the image, you're looking into the end of time. So according to Einstein, time ends inside the black hole. And I say that. And then I stopped speaking and I realized that 14,000 people are just, you can't hear anything. Silence. And I think, I think, oh no, they're listening. <laughs> you know, and just occasionally you get, yeah, that's what, which that's, you don't get in a band. That's what I tell myself when the crowd is silent. <laughs> oh, they're, they're really <laughs> concentrating on these songs. Um, <laughs> I was going to say, it's the opposite. It's the yeah, opposite right. of being in a band because you want, you want nothing. Right. You want nothing. Thinking. This is, but this is, this is really interesting because I, you've got so many people coming to the, to, to see you, see you speak and hear you speak. And, um, and also just to have their minds boggled. Because if I think about these things too much, it kind of like, it, it, I can start feeling a bit weird. Now, your brain is all full of this weird stuff. So do you feel weird constantly about the fact that it's, it's so, it's such a complex ideas? No, I, I say right at the start mm. that I'm going to talk about the universe and our place within it. So first of all, I haven't narrowed things down very much. <laughs> but secondly, the the point of the show really is the things we've discovered about the universe as i said the end of time inside black holes or the fact that there are two trillion galaxies right two trillion in the piece of the universe we can see i don't think anyone knows what that means mm. uh, no even professional astronomers you can't even picture those numbers and so the real one of the real points of the show is to just allow people to think about the meaning of it all um, with the information that we've got. But there's no, I, I actually also, I'm giving all my jokes away. <laughs> but I also say, you know, that I, I'm not going to tell you the meaning of life and the meaning of existence, because first of all, I don't know, which yeah. is really important. Nobody does. And secondly, if I did know, I'd charge a lot more for tickets. <laughs> does, it, does it worry you that you don't know? Because it worries me that I don't know. That, that's the, the, the key to science is being not only comfortable with not knowing, but being excited about it. So oh. you have to... First of all, you have to admit that mm. you don't know everything. And secondly, it's, it's like exploration. It's like you have to go to the horizon, to the edge of knowledge, mm. and look into the darkness, not with fear, but with excitement. And that, that's, that's the only thing you need to be a scientist. Because every explanation brings up more questions for me. And I've yeah. heard you explain things really clearly. and cle Like when you explain the, the universe is like, you sometimes say a big rubber sheet. Is that right? Yeah. With like, and, and that's how things the bend when you put a weight in the middle of it and stuff like that. Yeah, and then, and then, and then you, but I'm always that. Yeah, but there's still an edge to that. But there's no edge. It's it's endless. It's a really good question. I mean, I get asked this a lot because you're right. Einstein's picture of mm. space and time. Mm. That's what the rubber sheet is. It's space and time woven together. So immediately, you know, what what does that mean? <laughs> yeah. um, but what Einstein said is that 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 fabric of the universe can be distorted by things it is distorted by anything so you, you literally and everyone that's listening is distorting the fabric of the universe by your very existence only a little bit the, the, the earth distorts it more the sun distorts it more and so on and that that but if you imagine that like you're talking about the expansion of the universe yeah, yeah it keeps all getting einstein bigger. said was if you put two little dots on your rubber sheet yeah and then stretch it then the dots will move apart so those dots will be galaxies but you don't need the sheet. The sheet can be infinite. Yeah, because it, 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 the explanation makes me think of the edge of the sheet. But there is no edge to the sheet. No, as far as we can tell, so you're it's not, right. It, so it's expanding, but it's expanding into some, some, nothing? It's just stretching. It's just really hard to imagine nothing. <laughs> Sorry. It, it really is. Well, that's one of the things... Um, the, the concept Russell, of nothing is really difficult to explain. <laughs> Bertrand Russell, the right. great philosopher, mm -hmm. he was a, because you're right, that's one of the things that we think about with our lives, right? We think, well, uh, you know, th they're finite lives. So what happens after we die? It's a really common question. Mm. Is there just nothing? And Bertrand Russell said, yeah, but there was nothing before you were born and you're not worried about that at all. I'm not, no. So, 
it's kind of but you're, you're right i think that humans human beings have a, a obviously every human being has a problem with infinity and understanding what infinity is and also a problem with not infinity which is the fact that you don't exist forever we have a problem with that as well basically humans have a problem with everything yeah but, that, but, we, but that's <laughs> why we become problem solvers which is a good thing and uh, does it ever yeah. worry you uh, this is this is a quite a, a deep question does it ever worry you that because your existence, your Brian Cox's existence in the being is only finite, that things might get discovered after you're here that you want to know now? No, it's the opposite, actually. Um, I think the, uh, the, the, as I said, science is about accepting that it's exciting that you don't know. And all you can hope to do is find out a little bit more. And we're lucky that we live in this tremendous age of discovery. Um, in, in the show, I talk about black holes a lot because we're beginning to discover that space and time themselves mm. are made of something else. We strongly suspect, imagine that, yeah. atoms of time. Wow. What a remarkable idea. Right. Thank you very much, <laughs> Brian Cox, <laughs> Professor Brian Cox, for boggling our minds. And I, I, I guarantee if you go to see him, you'll have a great life and it will make you feel a lot better about your place in the universe. I, I'm feeling better already. You, Sinead? Yeah, Very definitely. Cool. Thank you very much, Brian. See you soon. Thank you so Lots much. Of, see you on tour. The best of the Chris Evans Breakfast Show with Sky. Virgin Radio. After 56 long years of pain on Sunday night, our next guest changed everything. It's come home and she's come to see us. It's the incredible back-heeled heroine, Alessia Russo. Hello. Woo. Hello. <laughs> How are you? I'm great. great. Thank you so much for squeezing us in, because you're really doing the rounds, aren't you? Yeah, yeah I'm busy at the minute, but uh, yeah, riding the wave. Thing is, this time is, is almost as important as the time during the tournament, because this is like the clean-up when everyone's excited... But we've got to keep that kettle boiling. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. So keep you're, the, the fans coming back. So you're yeah. going around, you're talking to everyone, you, you know, because it's, 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 we're all very excited, but we want to be excited next year and the year after, and it's got to grow, because these things, they happen quickly, but then they take time to grow. Yeah, definitely. I think we have a, a game against USA in October, which will be great, um, at Wembley again, and then we have... Uh, a World Cup next summer. So it's exciting times for women's football and obviously the WSL season starts in, in a couple of weeks. So, uh, yeah, good time to be a fan. It is a good time. And the, the celebrations after the match were so amazing. pure and amazing. I, yeah. I loved watching it. And, you know, it's very rare that I will sit and watch the, an hour-long celebration just giggling to myself, yeah. having mm -hmm. a, a, just amazing time. It just must have felt amazing. It really did, I think when the final whistle went and the even when Chloe scored the uh the winning goal the crowd just like erupted and it was just like this is this is mega and i think that the celebrations after and then we got to have a little party with all our friends and family and it was just like celebrating a great month for football it was just pure elation yeah, yeah. and well, i as someone that was there yeah i was literally behind the goal yeah. that chloe scored unreal yeah. unreal um, you can't, I can't even describe what it yeah. was like, but do you think? You do you think that, that you know, because you're wanting to play football, and the reasons for you being there are so much purer than it was? Because you know, I said that I wanted to be a footballer. I yeah. just wanted a Ferrari. Right? That's why I wanted. <laughs> but you had to like battle, not just to like get to the top of your sport, but also even to be allowed to play the sport. So it's like your whole life has been like trying to get there, and so the elation was so big because the reasons for being there were purely football. Yeah, and I think obviously the last time England won a, a major trophy was 1966 and yeah. 50 years ago women's football wasn't even allowed like it was banned like in the country which is crazy. Yeah. And then for us to go on and then win the next major trophy for England is just like it's come full circle and and yeah. It, it, yeah it <laughs> well the obstacles you've <laughs> had to overcome to get there are so much more than in the men's sport Absolutely. and it just makes the celebration so much more brilliant. Doesn't yeah, it? it does and yeah, it when the final whistle went, it was almost like a bit of relief as well. Like, wow, we've actually like done this, like a first major tournament in England. So long since England have won a, a big tournament. So, um, yeah, it was a, a special, special night. So, a big thing has happened, but how do we make this change permanent? How do we, how, how do, we do that? I think us as like players and, and role models now, I guess, have got to like keep pushing for girls to play football. We recently wrote a letter to uh, to the the government about how we want to keep encouraging girls to play football because I think only 63% of girls can play um, football at PE 
at school, really? which is Mad. crazy considering every single boy can play. Um, and there were so many young girls and young boys like at the at the stadiums cheering us on with banners. And to think that they can't even play in school is just crazy. So I think for us, we've got to keep keep pushing uh, for people to get involved and making sure they have the opportunities to do so. I, I mean, I don't want to blow my own trumpet, but for a few <laughs> years now, uh, Kaiser Chiefs have sponsored. Uh, Garth of uh, Ladies, Garth of Rangers, oh, AFC Ladies. Oh, nice. Yeah, we've done that for a few years. We've helped them out. We've helped them out. Yeah. Well, actually, our guitarist is from Garth. He pays for it. <laughs> I just take all the glory. But even the ne- even the next day uh, and this week, I walk my dog in Finsbury Park every day, mm-hmm. and uh, people are playing football more. Yeah. It's yeah. like it's 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 become infectious, and you know, families are out kicking a ball because you you don't need that much equipment. No, that's no. the beauty of the sport. Yeah, yeah. it's not like polo, is it? <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to, yeah. No. Um, so yeah, what are you doing today for the rest of the week? Are you are you doing more of this? Do you like doing this? Because obviously it's it's an important part of the job, and I think a lot of people that get training and stuff like this. But you you, you know hit the ground running. You're just thrown into yeah. talking about something very important and sending the message. But do you enjoy it? Yeah, yeah, I do. I've been very busy the past few days with lots of stuff like this, and then uh, tomorrow I'm going on holiday to take a little bit of time out and uh, get some sun. Get some sun. Yeah. I'm not going to ask you where you're going because we don't want the paps to turn out. <laughs> Very well deserved. You got a couple of questions, Charlotte? Do you have a message for any young girls that are maybe thinking about or just scared of getting into football and now watching you guys win want to do it? What would you say to them? Just do it. I yeah. think, like, I, used, I grew up playing with boys and as much as I wish I could play for a girls team, just get stuck in, get, get involved and the opportunities will be there and, and we'll keep pushing for that and... Yeah, you can go play in front of 90,000 people on Wembley, so what more do you want? Amazing. And one question I think is on everyone's minds. When you scored that back heel, what went through your mind? (laughs) Not a lot, really. Um, I should have scored the first shot, so I was thinking, (laughs) I need to do something about this. And I had a player in front of me, so I couldn't turn with the ball, so I just... The back hill was the quickest route to go, and luckily enough, it went in. <laughs> Amazing, uh, iconic, and uh, iconic, iconic indeed. Because in my in my daily googling, I was reading about where those boots are now. Oh yes, yeah. uh, that was pretty crazy too. I dropped dropped them off a couple of days ago to the Tower of London with the beef eaters, and they've put them next to the wow. Crown that's amazing. Yeah. So, you, I mean, so where, you haven't got any boots? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I need to get a new pair for pre-season tour. <laughs> Do you know what? After after the after that tournament, I don't think it's going to be a problem getting free boots. Okay. Yeah, no, I mean, luckily enough, we're, we're all sponsored anyway, so I had a lot throughout the tournament and, and the pair that, that I had were were from the tournament and then, yeah. And now, of course, I, you know, I can't sponsor them. <laughs> it's a bit too expensive. Uh-huh. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Should have got in there a few years ago. <laughs> it's been priced out of the market by your brilliance. Thank you very much, uh, Alessia Russo. So, so, yeah, rest of the day doing more of this? A little bit, yeah, a little bit. And okay. then And then holiday. Well, then pack, then yeah. sun. Well, yeah. spread the message. Don't take your boots. <laughs> <laughs> you can have a kick around on the beach, though. Yeah, like that. exactly. Right. Thank you very much, Alessia Russo. Uh, we're all, I mean, we're all proud of you. I know it's misplaced pride because I have nothing to do with it. <laughs> and uh, let's, I can't wait for the next one. Can't wait for the next one. Thanks so yeah. much. Can I come with you in October? Yeah. Okay. I'll try I've and got get another ticket. ticket. Okay, we'll see you there. Much. See you there. <laughs> Cheers. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. The best of the Chris Evans Breakfast Show with Sky. Virgin Radio. We've heard from a bunch of incredible guests already, but there's still more to come. The awesome Andrea McLean chats about her brand new mindset app, This Girl Is On Fire. Acting royalty Richard Coyle tells all about his new role in the latest production of To Kill a Mockingbird at the Gielgud Theatre. And Deacon Blue's Ricky Ross chats about his new memoir, Walking Back Home. So let's get right back into it. I was just busy chatting. We were busy chatting. Andrea McLean, there, there, there. Uh, but, and, and, and I got it right, didn't I? You did, you got it so right. <laughs> so right. It's an easy name. Does anyone get it wrong? Everyone gets it wrong. Oh, really? Um, but I don't mind. I'm so used no. to it. I literally answer to anything. But I'm what not... do people get Me wrong, too. usually? But Mc... Angela. Angela. <gasps> Instead of Andrea. And it's McLean. It's McLean. McLean? Oh. But it's spelt McLean, so I understand why you'd say McLean. It's the Scottish well, pronunciation, so it's M- McLean. And if my dad's McLean. listening, it's Andrea McLean. Andrea McLean. Yes. Am I allowed to do a Scottish accent? I, I, I don't know anymore. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. So you're here. I'm, I'm definitely here. I'm here. Yeah. And you've been working on something. And you're here to talk about that. Yeah. I'm not just, like, jumping in and changing the subject. No. <laughs> but you're here to talk about 
this app, but it's more than an app, isn't it? It is. It's basically started as a, a little online blog that I started four years ago, uh-huh. just wanting to help women. And then kind of realised I needed to make it into something that was more of a community and then thought, how can I do that? And then I thought, you know, I'm going to take this habit that we have of standing in Starbucks and whipping your phone out and scrolling. How can I make it into a really positive thing? And that's what I've been working on for about the last 19 months. That That's interesting. So it's about... So you, you, we've all got the phones. Yeah. We've all got them in our pockets and we use them. They can do anything. They've got more computers in than put man on the moon. That is you know a fact, I mean? yeah. yeah. So, but, but we just look at pictures that make us unhappy. <laughs> <laughs> And well, some make you happy. Like I, Charlie I, bit my finger. Yay! That makes you happy every time. Every time. <laughs> oh, Tilly met the guy, not Charlie, but the the guy who had his finger bit in the pub. I know we were, we, we were more excited than that than meeting McCartney. <laughs> but so so we, you want to change the habit if it's so this thing that's always in your pocket yeah. can actually help you out. Absolutely, and absolutely. How, how does that happen? Well. So we've created, everyone uh, may remember, obviously I, I left Loose Women in the mm-hmm. middle of a global pandemic, quit a job, <laughs> um, to literally strike out on my own. Um, because I thought, if I don't do it now, I'll never know. Yeah. And so basically Nick and I, who you know, lovely Nick, my husband, yeah. we've spent the last 19 months, we put together a, a, this amazing group of women. We've been working with around 200 women for the past 19 months. Testing, measuring, testing, measuring, uh, putting together this app behind closed doors, making sure that everything we're offering. Do you like that? Does that work? Is yeah. this all good? Do you like our master classes that we do? Do you like the experts that we bring in? We trained as life coaches. We really, yeah, we're coaches proper. now. We're proper coaches now. Wow. And um, and now we're ready. So now the app is actually it's on it's on the App Store. It's on Google Play, and we've gone global. We've now got women from around the world have discovered this whole thing of personal growth in the palm of your hand. Don't stand in Starbucks feeling a bit sick and angry like you normally do yeah, when you're scrolling. Yeah, I do. I do, I do. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why I do it. And why no. do I do it before I go to bed? <laughs> yeah, no, that's the worst one. Isn't adding, it? adding to my woes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but so, what is actually in there? What what kind of things can you can you participate in? Well, um, basically, you it's a it's a community mm. of women. So it's for women. Yeah. And when you when you arrive, what I love is you get a little notification. So my it's a real family affair. My sister is head of community. Hi, Linda. Who mm-hmm. should be listening? Um, you always get a little message from from her, from me. We encourage people to have a little look around. What they'll find in there is masterclasses on anything and everything you could possibly want to do with the human condition. So it could be on building your confidence, anxiety, imposter syndrome, anything you can flick through and think, you know, sleep, sleep, the final frontier, yeah. anything. So with the, there's master classes. I've cut them down to half an hour now with three key takeaways. And a master class is a really big word, makes it sound really it big, does, posh and scary. It makes it kind of scary, yeah. It's not. It's literally, do you know how we're talking here? Yeah. It's like that. But it's packed with great takeaways. There's, it's chat. It's a li- bit sweary. It's mm. normal conversation. But I call it a masterclass because you'll take something well, really great this, away from this it. This is the kind of thing I like about this because um, with like anything, I don't want to use the word self help, but I've bought a lot of books mm. and they don't help much because I buy them and it's the moment you buy them you think you've done something and then you don't open them and also once it's there on your shelf it's the same but the good thing about an app is you can change it and it evolves and it becomes yeah. something bigger as time goes by and you've totally hit the nail on the head so mm. i've i've written four books now and three of them have been um i wasn't dissing your books so, by the way no no <laughs> They're still available. <laughs> what I mean by that is, you know, people think, and I do it all the time. Okay, take, for example, a cookery book. Yeah. You buy a cookery book because you think, oh, my gosh, I really want to learn how to make this thing, whatever. And you buy the book, stick it on the shelf, and then you get really cheesed off because you think, I still can't make that thing. because you've never actually done anything It kind of haunts it. you sitting there. Yes. It haunts you. And then you find one you like, but there's not a picture. So you don't yeah. even know what it's supposed to look like. <laughs> but then do you know what you do? Is you go, well, that cookbook's yeah. rubbish. Yeah. But actually it was exactly that mentality because I've had women read my books and go that was great and it's great for 
a month mm. and then you kind of tail off and you stop doing the things. The yeah. whole thing about an app is... We can dip in and out. Well, you're cre- we are all creatures of habit. Yeah. And again, going back to that thing of standing in a coffee shop queue, you'll, you'll whip your phone out. That's your habit. So yeah. if you can get in the habit of you scroll through and every time you, you come up against something where you think, that's a really good idea, actually. I'm going to start doing that and if you did that every half an hour or yeah. once a day or twice a day that's your habit so for me it was about taking this idea of whether mm. you call it self-help or personal growth or top tips whatever and yeah. making it a really positive habit this girl is on fire mm-hmm. anything for the guys coming out yeah this guy is on fire okay will be coming very soon before by the end of the year this guy is on fire is going to be launched but it won't be an app it will be different okay oh i look forward to that because I need all the help I can get. Oh, we're, we're here for you. Thank you, Andrea. So you can get This Girl Is On Fire anywhere you get your apps. Yeah. Uh, highly recommended. And um, you've really put your heart and soul into this. I've sold my house. Wow. I've literally sold my house and gone all in on it. It's, wow. it's my baby. Amazing. See, that's the kind of commitment we want from our people. Not just dipping your toe in nonsense. Come on. Right, the app, This Girl On Fire, Andrew McLean. Uh, thank you very much for coming in. Thank you for having me. Cheers, bye. The best of the Chris Evans Breakfast Show with Sky. Virgin Radio. Things are always better in the morning, and that's why our next guest is up early. He's a fantastic beast, and he's coupling up with a new iconic character as he joins the cast of Aaron Sorkins to kill a mockingbird at London's Gilgood Theatre. Put your hands together for this acting royal. It's the resplendent Richard Coyle. Good morning. I, I really enjoyed that. Did you? <laughs> yeah, I did. Thank you. Were you acting last night? Uh, I, no. No? No, I wasn't acting last night. I'm oh. not on yet. Not on yet? I'm rehearsing. Oh, so right. I'm in the process of getting... I, I start on the 15th of August. That's brilliant. Yeah, so I've no. still got a week and a half. That takes the pressure off me. Yeah. Because I was, I was like, how oh, am I going to... I haven't seen it. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, there's no now. way I could have seen it. It's all good now. It, Imagine yeah. if I'd said I'd seen it. Yeah. <laughs> I'd have loved that. So yeah, you're... if you'd have said, I loved you last night, I thought you were terrific. Uh, I have done um, that before. Yeah, that wasn't me. I have done that before. <laughs> I did that when I went to see a play and then I, I texted the person saying how good they were and I didn't even realise it wasn't them on stage. Oh, no. I said, you were brilliant. Oh, didn't even yeah. know. You're such a great actor. <laughs> <laughs> it was like prosthetics. So, Hello, Richard. Uh, yeah. Um, so, uh, rehearsals. How's that yeah. going? It's going well. It's going well. I've got a bit of time left and, uh, you know, I'm at that panic the panic is starting it's arrived in the basement mm-hmm. and i feel a bit like i'm trying to ke- hold on to a sort of a rampaging bear's back at the moment you know is, like in different. rehearsals yeah there's the basics like lines you need to know your lines yeah you've got the costume yeah you got you, you know all the people in it yeah you know when to walk on stage do you ever does it all change on opening night uh, yes it does Right, it does actually. Uh, uh, this has been a backwards rehearsal because the show exists already. Mm. So I'm have had to learn movements first. Right. And so I've got my words, and then it's like you stand there, then you go there, and you leave there, and you come on there, and then I have to now make all of that work. And it's quite. Uh, I, I'm really actually kind of looking forward to being in front of an audience to make it sort of feel like an, an, a one whole entire thing. So at the moment, it's just like a series of bits. Uh, yeah, because having people watching you must, mm. must be the final glue. Yes, it is, and it weirdly elevates what you do. So it's sort of, it's like it provides the missing piece. Mm. It takes it out of the realms of being in you and with you and you, your self-consciousness, and you suddenly go and it's like, actually, this is my safety net on here with these other actors. And that's the thing that you need, I think, to really lift it. And it's an exciting play to be part of. It's a very exciting play to be part of. I feel extremely... Um, uh, blessed, very privileged, and it's something that I've always wanted to do, and it's a character that's meant a lot to me. So uh, it's one of the, the rare times in my career where I've actually I'm actually getting to do something that means it's significant to me in my life and important, uh, which is a, a wonderful feeling. Well, important is the word because it was a very important book, very important book. And I know that we were all probably made to read it probably before yeah. we realised how important it was. Actually, I think there was a New York Times uh, survey. Mm. Um, and they did. They 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 uh, polled the American public the, 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 to, to name their most significant books that have affected their lives. And To Kill a Mockingbird was second to the Bible. Really? Wow. Yeah, which is quite extraordinary. I've got some important books in my life. One's about a very very hungry caterpillar. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, so when you start on opening night, uh, you're in the same theatre, Giggle, Giggle Good Theatre, yeah, every the night. Good, yeah, that must feel incredible. Yeah, uh, I've been there before. I played. I did a play called Don Carlos at the Giggle, mm-hmm. so it's kind of sweet. Something it's kind of a then. yeah reunion. In fact, when I did Don Carlos at the Giggle, there was a fight in the stalls. Mm-hmm. Broke out. Which was, uh, we were trying to do the play on stage. And you were that two good. People, yeah, we held their attention so fixed <laughs> that, they, that it didn't, you know, they got into a fight. Yeah, we get a lot of fights at our, our shows sometimes. No, I'm not saying, yeah. I don't <laughs> encourage them. Well, Slightly I, different. I say yeah. that I don't encourage them. I've got a song called I Predict a Riot. I'm yeah. kind of yeah, letting yeah, it actually, I'm gonna, yeah. Yeah. But um, it, 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 it must be weird because you do lots of things. That's part of being an actor. You do yeah. lots of different things. You're in films, you do TV. Yeah. And that's the beauty of it. You can be anyone you want. And you can do it in lots of different ways. That's because right. The theatre, you're doing it every night. Mm. Uh, films, you probably get like, I don't know how many takes you do. How many takes? I mean, it depends. It? I think film, you get a little bit the luxury of time, a little more than you do with TV. TV is quite quick, usually, like a production line. But with, with, with the theatre, do you think you hit the ground running night one, or does it change? No, does it, it changes. Yeah, it, I mean, you don't really. Yeah, I think night one is about getting through the the blanket of terror that is that still, descends still, upon do you, you. Do you still get that terror? Yeah. Do you ever have dreams about not I not do, knowing your actually, lines? It is yes, I do have that. I have that that nightmare. I think that's quite common where I'm on stage and I'm trying to hide the script from the audience, so I'm sort of looking around behind my back. Uh, like but on I the also, Generation Game when they had like it written on boards and yeah, on, in your arms you can't really yeah. well actually in the old theatres they had a prompt uh, box in the front uh-huh. by the footlights mm. and there was a person sitting in there with the script mm. so you could look at them and go line and they would be there going this is your next really? line I, so it was a kind of an equivalent of the, the idiot board I really. do know some I do know some pop stars some quite famous ones won't know names that have like uh, a TV screen disguised as a monitor with the, the front, lyrics with the lyrics rolling up but then you and I thought I want that but then I found out you have to hire someone to run it, and that costs too much money. And I thought I'll just learn them, <laughs> just learn them. But I do, I do yeah. find that if I do have them written down yeah. somewhere on stage on a piece of paper, I don't need them. But if they're not written down so somewhere, it's like I always need them psychologically. Psychologically, yeah, a safety yeah, yeah. net, like a safety prop. Um, so, yeah. so I was mentioned it's an important play. It's got lots of heavy issues in it. Yeah, yeah, and uh, is that is that is that, that, that do you take that on board every night? Do you do you, do you feel that yourself, or do you just off to the pub have a nice night? No, I think it is. I I think you can't but feel the subject matter of this play is is um, very powerful and it's quite harrowing mm. at times. So I don't think you can you can not take it on in some way. Um, but we're telling a story, and it's important that we. I and mean, you know, to use uh, one of Aaron Sorkin's phrases, we dry it out mm. as it. We we don't. We we just have to tell the story, and the story's yeah. What does that mean to, to dry it out? Go it on. means don't don't play, um, don't play the emotions, and don't play the tragedy, or the comedy. Just just play it. You know, the the script is really sleek and it's very economic, uh, economical, and um, it's a it's a lean. You know, uh, it's a lean bit of writing. Mm. So it's like we don't need to do anything. We don't need to embellish more than the preparation that we've done. We're bringing it and just giving the story. Richard Coyle, thank you for coming in. I've been told to wrap it up. I'm running out of time. Are we? (laughs) We are running out of time. We're going to hit the news. Well, thank you for having me. Uh, You're in. Lovely. It's been amazing. To Kill a Mockingbird, London Guild Good Theatre, 15th of August and 19th of November. Uh, What would be a good night to see you? uh, Of the week or in the run? In the run. (laughs) Are you on Um, every night? yeah, Yeah, every night except Sunday. That oh. covers my birthday, so, so maybe I'll come on my birthday. Okay. Will I get a shout out? Yes, so on, if you're in, I'll, <laughs> so, I'll put it in there somewhere. Well, on Sunday night, you can come around, man, we'll watch Antiques Roadshow. That's it. Uh, That's tickets to Kill a Mockingbird.co.uk. Go and see Richard Crow. Thank you very much for coming in. Thank you. What a lovely man. The best of the Chris Evans Breakfast Show with Sky. Virgin Radio. I've just about sailed through this week with my dignity still intact, and now we're joined by a real gone kid whose music has us singing the blues, the greens, and everything in between. His debut memoir Walking Back Home is a delicious journey of discovery from Dundee to Deacon Blue. It's Tip Top Ricky Ross. Got through it. I didn't stumble once, Ricky. You were great. Thank you. You were great, Ricky. So, uh, Ricky, it's get confusing for the listeners. I know. Uh, I'll have a noise when I say my name. Ricky. And then when you say your <laughs> name, it's Ricky. Right, okay. uh, so, you do a bit of radio, don't you? I do, yeah. I do a, a, a regular show. A, mm. a, a Tuesday night show, which is a, a lovely... It's been a lovely thing. I've done it for 14 years. Wow. Yeah. So you knew it. 
<laughs> yes, exactly. I mean, you should see some of the old guys at Radio 2. <laughs> so, I, uh, I like doing radio, and the rest of the band always say it's closest to what I'm really like as a person yeah. than anything else I do, more than TV, more than on stage, which is nothing like me. But do you think you, you come out on the radio, this is the, that's the real you? I don't know. I, I grew up with radio as being such a great friend. You know, there's a, there's a lovely Nancy Griffith song called uh-huh. uh, if, you, if You Can't Find a Friend, You've Always Got the Radio. And yeah. it's it was such a big thing for me when I was a kid. And I remember going on a holiday. We never went abroad. Mm. So we always went to sort of like <laughs> seaside holiday places. And I remember... As a kid going with taking the transistor radio and just like oh gosh that's great the same DJs are, are here as at home because you grew up in quite a religious household I did yeah and yeah. Uh, you weren't allowed to go to the cinema I used to sneak in stuff like that yeah. uh, but at the radio were you allowed to listen to anything on the radio was that, my was dad, that easy yeah, well, going there wasn't much you know there wasn't really much risky stuff on the radio my dad I think must have loved the radio because the Beatles came into my life really early on mm-hmm. and we didn't have a record player. But we had a TV. But there must have been, you know, that sort of sense of music being played and uh, and, so, and, he, and he loved the radio. My dad loved the, the whole business of radio, liked, you know, Radio 4. Mm. I think he loved, you know, Radio 2 and stuff like that. And so. he loved a good tune as well. Yeah, he did. He did love a good yeah. uh, But the, it's interesting you mentioned the Beatles because they're a big factor in any musician's mm. life. And recently there was that documentary, the Get Back documentary. Yeah. Have you seen it? We, you know why we watched it? Yeah. Um, we were coming on, Dick and Blue were on tour just before Christmas uh-huh. and one of us had a Apple thing yeah. and we watched it on the tour bus, which is the most meta way you can, yeah. can watch. It's our band watching a band. But I found the most shocking thing about it was that how much, when you're watching it, I talked to mm. my band about it, how much you see, oh, they were they were just like us. Like, they were gods, but also when you see the workings yes. of it... It's just like the, any band. And the, and and But it was laughable how their little arguments were exactly the same as our little arguments. That's so funny, because I actually talk about this at the, at the end of the book. Mm. It's it, That's the kind of end of... Because I'd just come off tour and I'd, I wrote a kind of postscript. And that was the interesting thing for me. I, totally. It's like... Even if you've been in a crap band, even yeah. if you've been in the worst band you've ever been in, you know, like that whole business of rehearsing and also the business of taking a song in, you know, that oh, thing? Oh, it's nerve wracking. Because everyone says, well, what? taking a song to your own band is yeah. like the worst audience. They're, they're always like, uh, yeah, I could, yeah, I'll do, I'll do something on that and we'll change that. <laughs> but you even talk about this in the book about how it never takes something, never take a voice note. Never take a rough idea. Never take something. <sighs> always finish it a little bit more than you think you should to take yes. them because there's always, there's always, everyone has an opinion for just for having an opinion's sake. Yes. When have you ever done that? D- taken a, a a demo that was far too early to someone that thought they could listen to it. Oh, definitely, it happens all the time, and because I, uh, I can hear it finished. Yes. Well, I can't hear it finished, but I know what it yeah. can lead to. But it's, and, and no one else can see that apart from you because it's deep within your brain because you, it's almost like you're, you're creating... You're, your brain's working faster than you, you can make it happen. Yes. Yeah. And, and these old sort of music businesses probably say, oh, let, let me hear it because I can, I can... Give me it, you know, I can, I can hear that. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, you can't. <laughs> but what, watching the Get Back documentary is a little bit like... Because I, like, I love reading music or rock biographies. Do I love you? It. It's my favourite thing to read on, on the beach. That's why I've only really properly read up to the first pictures of your book. Sorry, I've got to admit it. I'm not going to wait if he says, "Ah, oh, did you like, you know, chapter 20? I've like, oh, just got to the first pictures. Because, I, I, you know, it's been a busy week. But I love it already, and it, I'm saving it for when I go thank away you. in September. Oh, and I'm, I'm really excited about it. But the, the good thing about a rock biography is seeing the similarities and differences between you and your heroes. And... Um, and it, like, because last holiday one, I read Rod's, Rod Stewart's, and Pete Townsend's in in a week, and they couldn't be more different. Uh, it's it's so weird. But in both of them, I could see a little bit of myself. Did yeah. you did you read a lot of biographies? I didn't, but I mean, I've read one. I think I the one I really love, the one I've been t- telling people about, I think over the last year mm. is the Peter Garalnik Elvis uh, biography. There's two. Mm. Two volumes of it, and it's a fantastically written book on any level, at any level. And the one I, I think that anyone, sort of aims towards is Chronicles Bob Dylan, which is right. I mean, it's it, even it's, even if you don't like Bob Dylan, you know. If, and there are people out there that don't like Bob Dylan. It's just a it's just a great piece of writing, and it, part of it just makes you laugh because you know that he's not really remembering this stuff. He's just. <laughs> 
guys, you know, he yeah, remembers oh, yeah. the, Have you read it? No, I haven't read it, no. But it's very funny. That's like, my next one on the list, then. He, he, yeah, well, he just looks out the window, and it's 1965, and he can he remembers a Buick parked out in the street, and the sound of it, you know, you think, <laughs> I remember Bob. the Buick right <laughs> down the street. But that is a funny thing about reading, you know, these biographies, because a lot of people will have ruined their memories in some way or another during yes. their career. Uh, but it's remembered such clarity. Sometimes I think, is this your memory or is this the truth? Because they yeah. make you always have to put, make yourself, you put yourself in a good light. But in this book, you don't always put yourself in the best light. But uh, I think that's the way to go, isn't it? I think so. And, and I mean, it's funny because we uh, you'll be like this. You have banned discussions about... They call them discussions. <laughs> we used to call political discussions just pylons yeah, in yeah. the studio. But... Um, we have banned discussions about what happened, you know, remembering, remembering a particular time, like going to America for the first time, whatever it was. And everyone remembers things different. And I'll talk, I was talking to Doogie the other day, our drummer, and just about summing a particular thing. And he would remember one aspect of it, which I'd completely forgotten. <laughs> um, and I would remember another thing. So it, it, it's just that whole thing of piecing it together. So for more info and live tour tickets, go to at rickyross.com. Thank you very much for coming in, Ricky. Good luck with the book, Walking Thank Back you. Home. Thank you for having me. I can't wait to get past the first set of pictures. <laughs> the pictures, choosing the pictures must be fun. It is good fun, yeah. yeah. I had to kind of email lots of friends and say, can I use this? So yeah. and it was, it was good, yeah. Okay, and, and his album, Short Stories Volume 2, also out today. What a wonderful time you're having. And it's a beautiful day. Thank you, Ricky. See you soon. What's up? The best of the Chris Evans Breakfast Show with Sky. Virgin Radio. Thanks for listening to the Best of the Breakfast Show podcast. Remember to subscribe so that you never miss the weekly roundup of all the best bits from the Virgin Radio Breakfast Show with Sky. <laughs> 